So last time we looked at uh, n-channel MOSFETs in the low side of the circuit. And we came to the conclusion that it's not always convenient to switch the low side of the circuit because you often want to keep this zero volt line uncluttered and unbroken so that it's the same potential throughout the entire system. So we want to focus our attention now on switching on the high side. So I've put the n-channel MOSFET up on the high side. But the trouble is this way round the body diode is conducting, so the lamp's just on. Also, we're going to have a problem here because source is connected to positive 12 volts and we have to take gate to a voltage above source. Well, I don't have any higher voltage. Positive 12 volts is the highest voltage in the system. So there's a difficulty here and I'm not going to bother with it in this tutorial. I'm going to come back to it later. I'm going to switch to the P-channel MOSFET because it's a lot easier to use. So here's my P-channel MOSFET in the high side of the circuit and it's an IRF4905. So this is the data sheet for the IRF4905 and if you look under description it says fifth generation HexFET. This is a very modern device and yet the RDS on, the on resistance, is 20 milliohms. It's actually higher than the IRF-Z44N which is an ancient MOSFET. So once again, uh, on the third line down, the drain to source on resistance, 20 milliohms. Now that's with a gate, uh, a VGS, a gate source voltage of minus 10 volts. So actually this one needs a negative voltage on the gate. It's also showing that this has um, been measured at a current of minus 38 amps. So what they're saying here is that everything's negative. This is like a mirror image of the n-channel MOSFET. Now one thing that isn't a uh, mirror image are the connections. So uh, whereas conveniently before the gate was in the middle of the uh, board, now it's stuck out on the outside. But this is still the gate, the yellow wire. I haven't put the little lettered beads on because they're a bit of a nuisance quite frankly. Um, I've put a red wire on the source this time just simply to remind me that this is a P-channel MOSFET and the drain once again is here which is connected to the lamp. So the data sheet told us to put negative voltage of at least 10 volts onto the gate with respect to the source. Well the source here is connected to plus 12 volts so my negative voltage very simply is minus 12 volts. We shouldn't call it minus 12 volts really I should call it zero volts. So let's connect that up to there and the lamp comes on. As I say, this is all a mirror image. But the MOSFET works in the same sort of way. It has an insulated gate. If I disconnect this yellow wire, the lamp stays on. I need to short gate to source. Well, once again, source is up here at uh, plus 12 volts. So I need to short the gate to positive 12 volts. And that turns the lamp off. Now the P-channel MOSFET is uh, the same as the N-channel in that it's got a body diode. Here it is. The body diode though in a P-channel MOSFET points the other way. So the cathode, the pointy end, goes to source and the anode is connected to drain. So by flipping the MOSFET around this way it lights up even without a voltage on the gate. You can see here on the data sheet that the diode is uh, pointing downwards this time as I say with the anode on the drain and if I flip between the data sheet for the 4905 which is the P-channel MOSFET and the IRFZ44N which is the N-channel MOSFET see how the body diode is the opposite way around. Now the light's been on for some time and the MOSFET's not particularly warm it's not cold but I'm not sure I would dare put the 55 watt bulb on this circuit, quite apart from the fact that the cigarette lighter plug can't handle it, because the on resistance of this MOSFET isn't very low, 20 milliohms. Now I've been through International Rectifier's entire catalogue of P-channel MOSFETs, and in the TO220 type, this um, plastic uh, type here, this is the one with the lowest on resistance. So 20 milliohms is the most advanced TO220 HexVet P-channel that they have. In N-channel you can go down to less than a milliohm. 
Now, I don't understand quantum physics, and I'm not particularly interested in reading up about it, but apparently the difference between N-channel MOSFETs and P-channel MOSFETs is to do with the difference between the mobility of electrons and the mobility of holes. The P-channel MOSFET relies on the mobility of holes, and it's not as mobile as the mobility of electrons. Unfortunately, the simple fact is that P-channel MOSFETs just don't have the very low on resistance that you get with N-channel MOSFETs. So although we've made the decision that we want to switch in the high side, I'm now going to have to make the difficult decision that we don't really want to be using P-channel MOSFETs. So I'm afraid it's back to the N-channel MOSFET. So have a look at uh, part four of this tutorial to see how you can use an N-channel MOSFET in the high side of this circuit.